I thought the wand was just being wonky about my keys. And it's still like going off over my crotch. And he kind of just scans it like just over my crotch. He's like, what's up with this? Like, what's up with that? What's going on here? Um, oh, my like, God. Clearly, dude. like, like not stoked. And at that point, it's like, like, what the hell am I going to do? Like, I'm wearing joggers. Like, I don't have like a belt or a buckle or anything I can blame it on. He wasn't just hovering it. Like, he was kind of pressing over it. And he could maybe tell like there was some textured, like hard thing down there. That wasn't my penis. <laughs> <laughs> sure there was. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, you betcha. You betcha. You know, you know how he's making me feel. <laughs> No, but yeah, he, he basically confronts me. He's like, what, like, what the fuck is going on down there? <laughs> and oh my God. I'm like, I don't have a choice. I, I take out my little baggie and in there I had a bar of chocolate mushrooms. I had like two different batches of 2C and I had some ketamine. So it was a good amount of stuff. And so Jeez, dude, you had all that in your crotch. Oh, fuck with <laughs> I mean, it doesn't take up that much space, you know, this is modern day hippie. We are your homies who've done nearly every drug under the sun. Over 600 psychedelic trips and nearly every kind of bender you can possibly imagine have armed us with a universe of knowledge. I'm Yuki, and with my co-host Reggie, we talk about how we do drugs in a responsible, safe, and fun way to improve our lives. Before we dive in, and so we don't get sued, a quick legal disclaimer. This podcast is for educational and informational purposes only. Our goal is to educate and inform others about the realities of substance use in an engaging and entertaining format. We share these experiences so you can learn from them without trying them yourself. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to attempt to recreate anything found in this episode or in any of our other content. We are not confessing to any acts stated in this podcast. The content in this episode should not be treated as factual or real in any way. With that, we welcome you through our portal and hope you enjoy the show. What's up, hippies? Hope you're having a vibey day so far. Just want to start off by saying thank you, Reggie, for bringing me 50 tabs of acid this past weekend. I appreciate gotcha. it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoy it, man. Yeah, we got a little a little drug trade ski going on. Give you some of that molly a while ago. Actually, I never asked. Did, did you take it? Was it any good? Dude, not yet. I actually was getting it like to do with a friend, and that friend has not been available to do it. So it's like, we'll find time eventually. It's just one of those drugs that's kind of a commitment, you know? Yeah, I suppose. Luckily, it doesn't last too long. But I know for me, it's like, I don't want to roll too, too often because then I might feel like I wasted it if I didn't do it. Right, that's exactly that what it is. On. It's like, oh, it's like, and I don't have like super easy access to it compared to like psychedelics. So I'm not trying to like waste it and then regret it or like use it and then regret using it or something like that. You know? Yeah, yeah, I feel that. Well, today I wanted to talk about concerts and specifically how to go about sneaking drugs into concerts festivals raves kind of going to combine that all together because more or less you're just trying to sneak in drugs to a place where there's some security it's usually not too crazy everyone has their own personal methods i've seen a lot of different ways to go about this specifically where to hide your drugs but the reason this has been on my mind was because this past weekend, I actually got caught with drugs at a concert. No way. Really? They dared? Also, where were you? What? So many questions, dude. <laughs> like... Yeah, no, dude, dead ass. Like, I was honestly so surprised because at this point, I've been sneaking drugs into concerts and raves for years, ages, it feels like. And I've never had any issues. And at this point, I kind of, feel like a pro like i was not expecting to get caught and honestly on this day in particular i it, it wasn't even on my mind i was just going through my usual process for get, bringing my drugs in but did you, place... you use your special bag or oh my fanny pack that i designed yeah no so actually unfortunately one of the parts of that fanny pack ended up coming unraveled like the oh, no. the sewing or something came off so i'm getting the designer to to fix it but until I get it to her, I'm using uh, one of my old fanny packs that is not custom, unfortunately. But it's a good one. It's got a lot of pockets. But basically, what ended up happening was I was going to a rave at our favorite rave venue in, in my city, which I, I know you're familiar with. And I did what I always do, which is when I'm going to the venue, I don't put any of my drugs in the actual fanny pack. I actually put them all in a little like Ziploc baggie and then I stuffed that Ziploc baggie in my pants 
like above my crotch because I feel safe, feel secure. Even when I get patted right. down, like they're never, you know, patting down they're not touching on top of my crotch. Sack, yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not like fondling me, you know, unfortunately not. But this time in particular, <laughs> I don't know why, but the little like metal detector wand thing that they wave like over you, uh-huh. it went off when it brushed up against my crotch. Oh, fuck. And the guy was like, take everything out of your pockets. And so I realized I'm like, oh, I have my keys in my pocket, you know, like pockets on like the side of my body. Right. So I take out my keys. I think it's going to be fine. Like I thought the wand was just being wonky about my keys. And it's still like going off over my crotch. And he kind of just scans it like just over my crotch. He's like, what's up with it? Like, what's up with that? What's going on here? Um, oh, my like, God. Clearly, dude. like, like not stoked. And at that point, it's like, like, what the hell am I going to do? Like, I'm wearing joggers. Like, I don't have like a belt or a buckle or anything I can blame it on. And I could also tell, I feel like when he was scraping the water over my crotch, like, he wasn't just hovering it. Like, he was kind of pressing over it. And he could maybe tell, like, there was some textured, like, hard thing down there. That wasn't my penis. <laughs> <laughs> sure there was. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, you betcha. You betcha. You know, you know how raisins make me feel. <laughs> No, but yeah, he, he basically confronts me. He's like, what, like, what the fuck is going on down there? <laughs> and oh my God. I'm like, I don't have a choice. I, I take out my little baggie and in there I had a bar of chocolate mushrooms. I had like two different batches of 2C and I had some ketamine. So it was a good amount of stuff. And so, geez, dude, you had all that in your crotch. Oh, chocolate I mean, it doesn't take up that much space. You know, the, <laughs> the chocolate bars are pretty small, but the guys like he, he, like grabs the bag from me and is like holding it up. He's like, what the hell is this? I'm like, Oh, it's just some chocolate. Like that's oh, yeah, it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And so he just looks at me like I'm a fucking idiot, which I suppose I was in that moment. And <laughs> he takes the bag. He just, he basically tells me like he makes a sign, like go in, but he very clearly like holds onto the bag, presumably right. to throw it away. But I hope that at least. Somebody did those drugs and enjoyed them. <laughs> if, if it wasn't going to be me or my friends. Oh shit. So they just took all your drugs. Yeah, exactly. And, and honestly, my theory on why this wasn't worse. Cause like I, I was, you know, pretty scared. I'm like, all right, I'm carrying quite a bit of substances on me. Like this, this could have gone much worse. And honestly, the fact that I just lost my drugs, like I was grateful that that was. The only thing that, that was the only happened. Punch, yeah, yeah. yeah. Best was, case scenario, dude. For real. no, dude. Straight up, straight up. I'm like, I can, I, I can buy more drugs. Like that's, that's okay. You know, I, I don't want to like spend a night in, in jail or something or, or get charged with some shit. And my theory on why it was so chill is because this is a venue that pretty much only puts on EDM shows, and they know for a fact that most people there are doing drugs. Like, right? It's not an untold secret they I, i'm pretty sure they see that their like alcohol sales are not as high as they should be for how many people are are at these shows and at their venue so then they, they know people are on shit and so if they were cracking down too hard on drugs i think just the general population would get wind of it Which, and yeah. they wouldn't want to go as badly so i think they just need to kind of look like they're enforcing it and make a quote-unquote best effort um and then otherwise just like let people be once they're inside. And I mean, I've been in this venue dozens of times at this point. I was stuck in my drugs the exact same way every time. Never had any so issues. So what happened, dude? I don't understand. Like, what was it the foil in the chocolate bar or something? Not- dude, so, so that was actually the only thing I could think of that was different from other times. Because every other time I will take out the chocolate pieces, put them in their own Ziploc bag and just be good with that. This time I did put in the whole bar and... It's not like aluminum foil though. Like it's like it's kind of like a layer of metal foil and then a layer of like paper on the inside, as far as I can tell. But like maybe the metal foil is enough to set it off. So lesson learned. Like that was very unfortunate. And dude, honestly, what, what I've also realized, what would be like a generally maybe safer and easier way for me to sneak drugs in is in my fanny pack. Like, you know, every fanny pack has like the big main pocket. And then some of them will have like smaller pockets kind of like on the back or or stuff like that. I've noticed that like security, they only really ever take time to check like the big main pocket. So especially if you have little baggies of drugs, like, like the fanny pack that 
that I've been using. It's not even the one I designed, which is like basically meant for hunting drugs. Um, as this little <laughs> like low key pocket kind of like right up against your, your chest when you're wearing it. And so that's a pocket where I usually keep my drugs, like where I move them into once I get into a venue. But I've never right. had that pocket check. That's never been an issue. And for small baggies like that, like even if they feel the, the fanny pack, I don't even think they would, they would be able to tell. You're at the club and the music is thumping, but you, you've got nothing left in the tank. So what do you do? Sniff some cacao. Yup, you heard that right. Sniff some cacao. It's the hottest new trend in the club and party scene. One bum-sized sniff of raw chocolatey powder contains the caffeine equivalent to a half cup of coffee and boom, it hits instantly. And the best part is you can now sniff cacao anytime, anywhere, right out in the open, in front of the DJ booth or the stage, even at the VIP table with your friends. Now, how does that happen without drawing unwanted attention? Snowgo's spring-loaded bump straws make it possible. These classy, triple mirror polished bump straws are the safest, most discreet way to enjoy sniffing cacao. In fact, you've most likely already seen people wearing Snowgo's bump straws as pendants around their necks without even knowing it. Discover why sniffing cacao using Snowgo bump straws is being called the biggest revolution in partying since the invention of rock and roll. Jump on over to snowgostraws.com to learn more. That's S-N-O-G-O-S-T-R-A-W-S.com and use discount code MDH15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order. Damn, dude. So That's, that's honestly, yeah. dude, you, like, I feel like you got lucky. Not in the sense that, like, honestly, like, realistically, they, they, that's probably all that would happen in most cases at that venue. And, like, in a lot of that kind of scene, in my opinion, at least from what I've seen, but yeah, sometimes I feel like you can get unlucky and that's what's scary. So like if for some reason they want to make an example out of you or like the wrong, like the wrong person is like watching the security guard or something like that's when you got to like, yeah, you just want so, to avoid those situations. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and I was asking myself what would have happened if I also got caught at a, a music festival or a bigger event or something like that. And right. Part of me thinks that even in those festivals, like again, the security, they're, they're not stupid. They're not clueless. Like they know people are bringing drugs in. And I think as long as there's not a police officer like actively there, I don't think they do that much because their job is at the end of the day, just get people in, like keep the line moving. And especially at festivals where there's usually like a lot bigger crowds of people trying to get in. I could see some frustration. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't know if I ever told you this, but I've gotten caught with drugs before too, and it was at a much bigger event. <laughs> oh shit! Wait, you never told me about this, dude. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, man. This was actually not yet, yeah, not this past summer, but the summer before it. I think uh, I went to Ibiza to see Calvin Harris later see david Guetta. they were like both performing uh venues next to each other like back to back which is pretty cool but we got Sick. tickets for both and of course if we're in ibiza and everything we're gonna do some fucking drugs right <laughs> you, still, you so better do drugs in ibiza, bro. yeah dude good times so we get some molly and i put it in my pocket like right over here uh like um in my chest pocket pretty much like the front left chest pocket mm -hmm. and we go through security, whatever, and they only checked like our waist and shit and like the pockets like on your pants. So like they just let me straight through and it was like not a big deal. Like nobody even said shit, you know, and I was like, bet we got the molly in like whatever. I wasn't even stressing about it because honestly, I wasn't even thinking about it. And one of my friends, he had a joint in that same pocket uh, and like he got it through and it was like totally cool. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me how we got so many drugs in a foreign country <laughs> like that. I don't know, man. We just asked around and found them. Yeah, dude. It's called, it's called being resourceful. Yeah. And it was, it was all good shit too, which is cool. <laughs> like, Cause like, especially with Molly, you gotta be careful. But um, we went to uh, Calvin Harris and then everything was great. We took Molly, like we took a bunch of Molly and like rolled and it was a great time, whatever. Uh, so then we're going to David Guetta afterwards. And so of course we have to go through security again. And so this is where I fucked up. I was so obviously rolling, dude. <laughs> like my eyes were just like gone. Like, you know what I mean? Like it was super fucking obvious that I was on something. Yeah. And so because of that, when I got up to security, they like didn't just do the regular check. They also checked all of my pockets on my chest and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And so of course they found the bag, which 
honestly, I didn't really care because I was already rolling super, like pretty hard and like I already did as much as I wanted to do. So I was like, whatever, I don't really need to do more. Like they could take it. It's not like I can take it on a plane back to the States. Also, I think this is a testament to the the potential fact that it's impossible to have a bad time when you're rolling. <laughs> even <laughs> when your drugs get caught, you're still having a good time, bro. <laughs> Literally, yeah, it didn't even phase, like it didn't even ruin the trip or anything like <laughs> oh, that. That's yeah, funny. Pretty cool. But uh, what made it even cooler was that my friend who had the joint <laughs> in in that pocket, I, he didn't look nearly as fucked up as me. He also didn't do as much as me. Um, When he went to go through security, he like, <laughs> when they went to go touch his uh his um like his pants and shit he made like a woo like kind of noise and like <laughs> and pretty much just made the security guard like super uncomfortable and so he just <laughs> let him through like he just checked the pockets on the pants and just let him through right away because he was like oh he like my friend made him uncomfortable like whether intentionally or not i thought it was hilarious and because of that he didn't even see or think to check that he had a pocket right here with a joint in it, a whole ass fucking joint, dude. Okay, my bag of Molly was so small compared to this joint. Right. <laughs> like, and he got in with the fucking joint. And then um, yeah, there was like a group of five of us, and we we went to one of the bathroom stalls. This this club, by the way, it's a whole other story. I'll tell you later. I'll I'll probably tell it on the pod at some point. But they had like a whole DJ set at the bathroom and like we snuck into the uh, a stall, like five people lit up the joint and smoked it and then had an amazing time watching David Guetta. But but yeah, man, I Damn. feel you, dude. And I was also super grateful that they didn't do shit other than take the Molly and let me in. Like, that was it. You know what I mean? Like, is it like, Amer- like, and I was just wondering, like, is it like American privilege or is it just like kind of like your situation where it's like they kind of just know that the shit goes down? So uh, I don't really care what the reason was. I'm just glad that the consequences weren't worse, you know? Dude, honestly, in a place like Ibiza, I would not be surprised if the local drug dealers have a deal with the bouncers at clubs where any drugs they find, they give them back to the drug dealers. At oh, some, like, low shit. Range That's probably why they look for it. Dude, I, I mean, it, it is their job, but we have done an episode in the past on the, the drug culture in Ibiza and like drugs make that island go round. Like truly yeah. everything that happens on the island, which is mostly tourism and partying, revolves around drugs of various kinds. So... Dude, you know what's crazy is how thorough the guy was when checking me because he not Mm. only found my bag, but I had a tiny little, like, not even a quarter of, like, a pressed pill in my pocket, too. Like, just, like, as a backup, like, in case. Like a crumb, a literal crumb. And he found the fucking crumb and took it out. I was like, what's this? And I'm like, I don't know, man. (laughs) Man, he straight up sniffed you out, like... Yeah, but it's whatever. I looked super fucked up, so like I learned my lesson there. But um, but also like I didn't really care because I was already rolling. Yeah, so yeah, it worked yeah, out. Yeah, that's fair. No, I, I've definitely heard of friends who like when they're too trash. Like e- e- even if they're drunk and they don't have any drugs on them, like if you make a fool of yourself, you're being obvious about being fucked up. Like concert security, whatever, will pay more attention to you they yeah. will try to that's fact, you know, like feel it out a little bit more and spend extra time i've also seen like especially when you're going into a festival like some gates might have longer lines than others and in some cases it can be safer to go through a gate that has a longer line so at that point they're just trying to get through more people versus if there's not a line like they they might check you more thoroughly just because right. they have the Damn, time to about that life hacks right there <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um, unless but, the longer line is because they're being more thorough. <laughs> <laughs> true 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 yeah you, honestly you, you can't know for sure hey hippies we hope you're enjoying the show so far if you're listening to this on spotify or apple podcasts and are having a good time you need to come over to youtube and subscribe to the modern day hippie youtube channel we publish exclusive video content and i promise you the experience is richer and more interesting so if you're getting any value at all stop what you're doing open up the YouTube app and subscribe at Modern Day Hippie. If you're watching this on YouTube and aren't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Go press subscribe. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the show. But but, but to get to my recommended ways to sneak drugs in, so aside from this one last time, the previous time getting caught with drugs, hasn't happened to me yet. And my go-to methods are the Ziploc baggie over your crotch. That's when I have like more stuff. And then if I have less stuff, I'll stuff it like 
in my shoe or in my sock or something like that. Especially if we're talking like powder baggies, those are really easy to like slip in somewhere, get away with. But don't try to put a vape there because I've gotten checked for vapes in my shoes before in, in Washington, D.C. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah dude. Like, they cracked down that hard on the vapes? Dude, I was only 18 too at the time and they like straight up like were checking my shoes for vapes. I was like, what the hell? Like, Dude, funny enough, I had a very narky experience in Washington, D.C. as well. Uh, it was before I was 21. We went to this club for my friend's birthday. One of his favorite artists was performing, this like DJ guy. And as we go in, first off, I had a ton of trouble going in because I had forgotten my fake ID. Like I had no oh, form sure. of ID on me at all. <laughs> and luckily I had a picture of it. And like the guy, the bouncer initially was not going for it, but I was persistent and eventually he let me in. And so I'm, I'm in the club and you know, my, my friend buys me drinks and whatnot. Like we're good. And as like the party starts going, like I'm drinking from this can of beer. And for some reason, like one of the bouncers of security inside, like singles me out and is like, Oh, I need to like double check your ID just like in the middle of me, like hanging out with my friends and drinking my oh beer. My God. And so they like pull me outside and they like see that I don't have my ID. They see a picture of like the fake one, but they're like not down for that either. So I was inside this club for all like 10 minutes. I had like a quarter <laughs> of a beer and they kicked me out. And then the shittiest part about this was the club was pretty far from where we were all living at the time. So I was like, oh. I'm not about to drop like 80 bucks on an Uber by myself. I was like, honestly, like the area is pretty chill. I'm just going to walk around and, and wait for my friends to like get out of the show. So I sent them a text being like, Hey, let me know when y'all get out. Like I'll, I'll come meet y'all and we can Uber home. And so whatever I'm walking around, I'm like, I like call a few friends on the phone, see what they're up to. And it starts getting like later and later. And at some point I like turn back to go back to the club and I see that the show had been over. There weren't many people left around. And I find out that my friends had already left without me. And oh, what they, the fuck? I, 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 I think they didn't see the text for me. Like oh otherwise God, like, it would have been dude. fine. But I was just like stranded, like in the middle of like DC at like two in the morning not wanting to to take a really expensive uber back home and i was just kind of like sulking around and there's this group of guys who are still there i don't know we just started like chatting and vibing they like give me a cigarette this is back when i really nice. smoked cigs um and they try to convince me to go to the freaking casino like uh, across the river oh, in yeah. maryland <laughs> at like two in the morning on like a wednesday or thursday night and I was like, damn, this would make for a great story, but I literally have to go to work in an office tomorrow. So end up calling my expensive house Uber back home by myself. Jeez. And <laughs> that was, that was a rough, disappointing night. <laughs> damn, dude. We've all but, had disappointing nights, man. <laughs> but going yeah. back to the, the drug, like the drug check things, honestly, I'm thinking back to that Ibiza time. And I think there was some upside to the Molly being confiscated on my end because um some of our friends who were with us they were <laughs> they were definitely i felt kind of bad because they wanted to do more molly and uh and like obviously they didn't get to but mm. those girls were so freaking drunk dude like one of them literally lost her phone and broke it or like lost it or broke i don't know which one honestly but like she didn't have a phone like for a while Jesus. and then like their whole night was like already kind of like fucked like if i'm being real like just from being too fucked up from like alcohol so yeah there's probably a reason that they t like the bouncers target the people who look like they're like really fucked up or like look like maybe they shouldn't be doing it like i get it there's these aren't bad people they're just people just like you like just like you and me like who are just doing their jobs bro and like yeah. if it's going to cause them less problems like to single someone out then i respect it but that's yeah, also yeah. why it's like don't be a liability dude like that's the number one rule yeah don't be a liability and even with like festival security or, or bouncers like just just be polite, like be nice. Cause unless you do something to really piss them off, like, yeah, just like you said, they're not going to go that extra mile just to try to like screw you over or get you arrested or something. Like if you're chill, if you're understanding, just be like, yeah, you know, sorry. I, I had stuff like my bad. They're, they're probably not going to do much. Like don't, don't give them a reason to be pissed off enough at right. you don't give to like, don't be starting fights and shit. No, That's just no, the God, no, shit. God, no. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you, you lose nothing by being polite and 
nice, like in general, but especially in a situation where someone is in a position of power where they might be able to fuck you over if they really wanted to. Be kind. Uh, <laughs> nah, dude. But my my learning from this is like number one, like always just double triple check for metal and and whatever I'm I'm bringing in. The the other like potential culprit might have been some of the drugs I've been buying from like nicer sellers, vendors, whatever. They'll give them to me as a little like kind of like round like glass vials that are kind of shallow. Mm. And I haven't had any issues with those in the past, but there was like a new one that. I had some some of my ketamine in this time, so I'm like, who knows? Maybe the cap was metal or something like that. And it was yeah, either that, it, honestly, or it was like the 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 foil, foil and, the chocolate. and the chocolates. Yeah, yeah. So like, I think in the foil, dude. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. No, and so honestly, next time, like, I think I'm gonna stick with my same method, but I'm just gonna make sure there's no metal in there because it's like that's that's just like the low hanging fruit. Like every security thing you go through will have a metal detector, like. Just don't, don't mess with that shit. <laughs> I, I was, that was dumb of me for not checking. Um, yeah, yeah they're now, not even looking for drugs. They're looking for guns and shit. <laughs> no, dead ass, dead ass. Like guns, knives, like that's, that's much more of a priority. So don't be an idiot like me and not double check for those things. Cause honestly, <laughs> I, I, I think part of it was like, I wouldn't say I got complacent with things, but I, I just, I, I had my routine, you know, it's like, oh, this is my routine right. for like seeing my drugs in. I didn't think about it too hard because I kind of just do that on autopilot. But I, I, hey, I man, it's not burning, man, bro. <laughs> hey, even at Burning Man, you got to be careful, though. Honestly, if anything, at Burning Man, it's like kind of scarier. Um, oh, yeah. I remember not, you not scarier, but yeah, like at Burning Man, like y- y- unless you like really know someone who you meet, like, the safe thing to do is just assume that they might be an undercover cop. Whereas at like these local EDM shows, like once you're in, there's no undercover motherfuckers. Like everyone who's there is wearing a uniform. Like just go in the middle of the crowd to do your drugs or in the bathroom or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, man. Everything else for a reason. And uh lessons learned, dude. I feel you, bro. I've been there. Um, I think we got lucky and I think the key is to not get unlucky and you don't want to get you don't want to make yourself more unlucky by behaving improperly. So no, exactly. Sense and, you know, hope for the best and hopefully we'll find, have a good time. Do your drugs. Be yeah. Responsible. <laughs> safely. <laughs> safely. Uh, yeah. And to be honest, part of me is glad that it happened this time when it was relatively low stakes. Cause I think that this is a lesson that, that I will remember. I'm like, uh, okay. Lost a couple hundred bucks worth of drugs. Not the best thing in the world, but all things considered, could have been much worse. Now I will remember this and I will be a lot more vigilant uh, future times when I'm thinking about how I want to bring my drugs into a venue. So honestly, oh, yeah. if I had just used my brain and thought about the freaking foil on those chocolates, I think I would have been fine. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. We we hope you picked up some useful pointers for uh, for having drug related fun at whatever festivals, raves, concerts that you go to. And we hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Stay safe, y'all. You've been listening to Modern Day Hippie. As you exit the portal, we have just one small ask of you: if you learned something new today, had a laugh, or resurfaced a drug story of your own, we want to hear about it. Drop us a comment on YouTube and show us some love on your favorite podcasting platforms. Internet algorithms really dog on us because of the topics that we discuss. So your support goes even further here than you might think. We'll catch you next week.